Yeah, is this GameStop? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice to meet you, John. I, I really don't care. I'm looking for an RPG to play. Dragon Age Inquisition? <laughs> Wasn't that like 2014? EA? <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I call you guys because the games you guys recommend to me are the ones that I definitely don't play. And now you threw EA in the equation? <laughs> you see what I'm getting at here, John? It won Game of the Year? Well, that doesn't seem to mean much these days either. But what the heck? Let's give it a try. So finally, in 2021, I decided to give Dragon Age Inquisition a fair chance. I haven't played the Dragon Age game since 2009 with the classic Dragon Age Origins. I didn't finish that game though, and it took me a while to remember as to why. And I want you guys to picture an unzipped laptop case holding a $1,500 gaming laptop and a kid sprinting through the airport not wanting to miss his flight. Keep in mind that at the time I was making around $7 an hour and that's being generous. So yeah, my Origins playthrough came to an abrupt end and my Warhammer Online Raiding Guild no longer had a tank. I don't want to get too emotional though, so let's move on. Since then, I have not played a Dragon Age game, and when EA acquired Bioware in 2008 and Dragon Age 2 was completed in just a year, I didn't even give it a chance. I read some reviews, and although I don't typically go solely off of reviews, I wasn't a huge EA fan and I was young and kinda salty. In some ways, I'm happy that I didn't play it. It was of course rushed, and the major changes to streamline the game for the masses to get more money versus keeping it more true to the original can rub people the wrong way. In other ways, I'm disappointed that I didn't even give it a chance because despite its known issues, I know many people who still very much enjoyed it, and of course I missed out on all of the Dragon Age lore with Hawk, whom recently showed up in Inquisition, and yeah, he looks pretty badass. But enough of Dragon Age 2. When Inquisition came out, I didn't really even know about it. Life was pretty busy, and any gaming that I did at the time was almost always multiplayer games with friends. Now you guys know why I have FPS in my name when I run an RPG channel. With the announcement of Dragon Age 4 and my RPG life back in check, it was time to learn the ways of Dragon Age. I don't want to be a complete noob when Dragon Age 4 comes out, and I'll likely cover DA4 with real videos, not this opinionated crap that I'm doing right now. So hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. We're getting close to 50k subscribers. I appreciate everyone's support more than you could know. Those of you who are new around here, I encourage you to check out some other videos on the channel. This is not my typical format. All right, back to the video. So I paid $9.99 for the Game of the Year edition of Dragon Age Inquisition on sale in the Steam store, and my adventure began. Let me first say that this is not an official game review, I'll likely do an in-depth review when I actually complete the game. This is just me sharing my experience so far. According to Steam, I've spent 39 hours total in the game, but I think I must have left it AFK for a while because I definitely haven't played that long. The character creation was pretty decent. There was four races and three classes to choose from. It doesn't sound like much, but after getting some time in the game, you get to see and experiment with the many different ways that you can build your class. For example, the rogue class encompasses dual dagger wielding, but also covers the archery category and more. So there's technically kind of more classes than just three. I was able to make my dwarf look pretty badass despite there not being enough beard options almost quit the game right then and there, until I saw how crazy you could actually make your character look, and I had to stay for the fun. The game begins with a cutscene, which most of the cutscenes in the game do look very 2014-ish. Not a bad thing though, because the game came out in 2014. When you get into the game itself, the graphics are actually impressive, and I'll get more into that shortly. The first scene is pretty cool, you probably won't know what the hell's going on, but it's obviously very important. And then you find yourself in the game with a strange glowing green mark on your left palm. The reason why I really like the start of the story in this game is because it puts you, the player, in a situation where the people around you all feel very differently about you. Many don't even know how to feel about you. These are characters that you have not even met before, and all the attention seems to be on you and your Green Lantern hand. You start off being interrogated as a prisoner because some think that you're responsible for the giant rift in the sky that demons are currently pouring out of. 
Those who haven't played the game, don't worry, there won't be any spoilers in this video. I'm not going to get into much of the details of the story anymore. The point is that I instantly became invested in my character and wanted to push on not only to see how others react to me, but also to try to figure out what the hell happened to me. As you get more and more into the game, you realize that the plot itself might perhaps be the highlight of the game. Some games that you play are purely for the action, and this is certainly not one of those. I'm going to get into the combat itself in a minute, but I can honestly say that up to the point of where I'm at currently, being a part of the ongoing story and witnessing it through the many cutscenes is the primary motivating factor as to why I'm still playing it. There's really not many games out there where I truly want to talk to almost every character I see to try to get as much information on them, the story, and the world itself. So props to Dragon Age Inquisition. It is important to point out that you do control a party of four in this game, but really only assume the role of one at a time. I think there's a total of nine characters that you meet, and you get to bring three of them along with you for your party of four. The cool thing though is that all of them level up with your party even if they're not currently with you, and that basically means that you can swap them in and out between missions. I'm not necessarily a fan of all 8 characters, but talking to them, playing them, learning who they are and where they stand in the scheme of things has truly been an entertaining experience. I've also noticed that depending on who you have in your party, unique quest lines will come about and also some very interesting background party banner which can be quite humorous. Listening to this has been a lot of fun and not only adds to my initial playthrough, but kind of makes me want to try things again in different ways. Some of these characters are rich in history and come from previous Dragon Ages, which makes it all the more fun to delve into. I can really feel how rich the lore is in this game, and I really want to be someone who actually understands it. And that says a lot for a game. The last thing on the topic of the characters and story without giving any spoilers away, I want to say that I felt the weight of making heavy decisions, and also felt the craze of being involved in complex politics. You have to make a lot of choices, many of which have severe consequences, and I was on the edge of my seat most of the time. It has been a very immersive experience in that aspect, and my god, this game has reminded me as to why I will never ever run for office in RL. And this leads us right into talking about gameplay in the open world. Let's first take a moment of silence for the environmental artists over at BioWare. Actually, they did a f***ing phenomenal job. Sign me up for National Geographic Thetis, I'm all in. Some of these places are incredibly well done, just when you think it might be getting a little boring, you see an opening between two rocks, next thing you know you're deep in a rock chasm that opens up to a hidden fort with caves branching off of it, and the backside of it brings you up to a mountain range. And don't let me forget everyone's favorite little nugs that run around everywhere, who the hell named them that? Anyways, the environment, whether in nature or the cities, the palace is damn cool, is really awesome and it honestly gives me hope for Dragon Age 4. I know I'm not the only one who worries about Bioware and EA these days, but the story and the environment and Inquisition really do give me hope for the future. It might not be all doom and gloom. And the graphics themselves are actually pretty good on PC, especially considering that this game came out over six years ago. And if you're a console player, I actually did play the PS4 version for about an hour, and it's one of the better looking games for that system. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the combat. At this point, even if it was bad, I might consider fighting through it just to be able to continue the story and see the world. But it's not bad. It's certainly not the best combat I've ever played, but it's decent enough and I'd say overall it does the game justice. I encourage those of you who are turned off by the thought of controlling an entire party to still give this type of combat a shot. I know exactly how some of you feel because I felt that same way before. After Origins, besides turn-based games, I didn't ever want to control an entire party myself. I wanted my one guy and I wanted to train and be deadly with him alone. And that's what I thought I liked. But after giving Inquisition a true chance and giving myself time to learn without getting too frustrated, I've come to love this style of strategy action gameplay. So turn-based games are a challenge of the mind, while most straight-up action games are more of an eye-hand coordination challenge. Inquisition is neither of these, but it does combine both of these types of challenges into one. 
you will be jumping around, dodging and blocking things, and using your hotkey skills to save the day. But you can also pause the game, enter a tactical view, and order your party members around. It's action combat, some tab targeting, and strategy all in one. I highly recommend giving yourself time to actually learn it, and then make an official judgment. But the cool thing about this game though is that if you still just don't really like controlling a full party or if it feels overwhelming, if you play the game on normal or learn the behavior tab well enough, many of you should actually be able to get through the game controlling just your one character and letting your party members just follow their AI routines. However, let me warn you that the AI in some cases has really pissed me off, <clears throat> Sarah. Sometimes it's a little wacky and your party members do stupid things. It's not game ruining though, and you can find ways to overcome it. So there's a lot of different skills and builds you can do in this game, and you can even respec your characters at any time for an affordable in-game price. Not a microtransaction, believe it or not. And you'll probably do this at least a couple times. Navigating and experimenting with the skill trees is a lot of fun. I still have a lot to learn, but I'm just starting to think about how to do combo abilities between my party members. And if you're a little bit bored about the skill trees that you initially see, don't worry. Not too long after you start the game, you'll actually get access to more skill trees. And the last thing I want to mention with the combat, and this is a negative in my opinion, is the resurrection system. I decided to play the game on hard, and even though it has been challenging at times, it seems like you can really cheese the resurrections on your party far too much and easily. There's been so many fights where two or three of my party members have been killed, but I've been able to resurrect one, and they res another, and then they go down again, then my main guy goes down, then the other guy reses my main guy back up, and then my main guy reses the first guy who died, and so on. My party doesn't end up wiping, the fight goes on, and I eventually end up victorious. It is cool to survive tough fights, but the res mechanic kind of ruined the immersion of some of these fights for me. I feel like I'm playing Dragon Age Resurrection sometimes. Some of you guys are going to tell me to get good. The last thing I'll talk about is also a negative in my eyes, but not the worst thing ever. There seems to be just way too much to do in the game, and maybe some of it is a little unnecessary or even pointless. The game can be a little overwhelming, and I feel like I'm sidetracked from what I really want to do a bit too much. The war table mechanic, for example, although I'm sure some of you guys love it, I'm not really feeling it. It doesn't seem like it's a really necessary thing to have to do that really adds to the game. And accompany that with the 4 million side quests piling up, I think some of this could be removed. It's kind of hard to explain because I'd rather have a game be like this than have too little to do, but I just wanted to mention this. Some of you guys might know what I'm talking about, and some of you guys might not. One example would be the Hinterlands. It never seems to end, and part of me doesn't want to miss out on any content, and the other part of me is like, damn, I'm starting to get a little worn out from the game. I also keep hearing that the game in general is insanely long. That's usually a good thing, but I do fear a little bit that I might lose interest at some point before I beat it, but if the story keeps up at the pace that it is right now, there's not a shot in hell that that happens. And that's all I have to say on that. So overall guys, I'm very happy that I've delved into this world once again. I think Inquisition is pretty great so far, and I definitely recommend this game to those of you who are looking for an RPG to play. Dragon Age 4 I heard is planned for early 2022, so you got over a year to learn and finish Inquisition. You might need the whole year. Hope you guys enjoyed hearing my initial thoughts on Dragon Age Inquisition. Like I said, I usually do more well put together content, so be sure to head into the channel and check out some of that. And if I can earn your sub, I'll be forever in your debt. We're getting close to 50,000. If anyone wants to come hang out for some live streams, I'm currently streaming none other than Dragon Age Inquisition. And according to what everybody's saying, I'll be streaming it for a little while. Turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss a stream. The only days that I kind of have a schedule for live streams are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, starting at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. And the other days of the week are mostly random because I'm working on videos and I'm not really sure what I can stick to. I'll see you guys on the next one.